Hello, and thank you for attending today's webinar, How to Boost Donations and Power Awareness by Implementing Your Google Ad Grant for Nonprofits. Around here, we believe that your cause is our cause, which is why we host this monthly free webinar. We are committed to supporting you, whether it's running your organization, planning your fundraising initiatives, or better connecting with you and your donors. We hope today's webinar provides you with the valuable information about how you can maximize your Google AdWords grant to advance your mission. As a reminder, we will be sending a recording of this webinar and the webinar slides to all registrants via email. So without further ado, let me introduce today's panel of speakers. Cameron Ripley is the CEO and co-founder of Community Boost Consulting, a digital marketing agency that specializes in engaging with nonprofits looking to effectively leverage their $10,000 a month Google Ad Grant. Cameron helps the organization reignite passion for the mission, build sustainable and diverse revenue streams, and create successful approaches to fund development. Lindsay Hempfield is a customer success manager here at, Global, uh, at Mobile Cause. Lindsay advises and guides our customer with fundraising and donor engagement strategies. She has worked with countless nonprofits on successful campaigns and sharing her British of fundraising experience during her presentation. And they are excited to bring an action-packed agenda today. During this webinar, you will learn how to make the most of your monthly ad grant, ideas for compelling ads and landing pages, tips for managing the performance and success of Google AdWords account, and you'll hear a successful story from a fellow nonprofit, Moms and Prayers International. At the end, we will have a Q&A session to answer your questions. Please submit any questions or comments in the questions pane of your control panel during the presentation. We're going to start today off with a poll question. What is the main challenge of your organization faces in implementing a Google Ad Grant? Getting approved, writing ads, managing my campaign, A and B testing performance, increasing conversions. I'm going to give you a few seconds to make your selection. Looks like a lot of it's you guys are still making your selections. Give you a few more seconds here. All right, looks like the majority of you have made your selections. I'm going to go ahead and close. And our results are in. 36% uh, said get approved, 19% said writing ads, 26% said managing my campaign. 2% AMB testing performance, and 17% increasing conversions. Cameron, what do you think about those? Yeah, it's, um, it's great to have everyone sharing their, their input of what their, uh, what their challenges are currently. Um, and it, so it sounds like, you know, when we're still looking to get approved and kind of managing or setting up our campaigns, we're more on the early stages. So I think this webinar is going to be a great ass, asset because we're not only talking about getting improved, what those steps look like, but also how to come up with the best strategy today. All right, great. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to hand it over to you. All right. Let me see. Okay. Um, all right, everyone. Well, again, I appreciate everyone giving us your time here, and we're really excited to just share with you how your organization can not only get, but more importantly, maximize your monthly $10,000 Google grant. So you can not only drive more online giving, but ultimately more impact. And so first, what we're gonna be talking about are the fundamentals of Google Ad Grant. And so there's a couple of key things we wanna hit here. Um, overall, the Google Ad Grant can be such a powerful channel for your organization because when we use it effectively, we can send upwards of about 5,000 website visitors to your website every single month, which can result in about 60,000 additional visitors coming to your website that normally might not have found your mission. And so today we'll be diving deep into how we 
not only send new visitors, but build our subscriber list, create more volunteers, and ultimately increase online giving so we can make a bigger difference. But first, there are some key stipulations. So, you know, from the poll, it looks like we have some new people who certainly haven't been approved yet. And so, there's a couple key step stipulations that we all want to be aware of. So, once we, you know, first, we get our $10,000 Google grant. But what it is, is it's actually an in kind advertising grant. So, to give us perspective, um, you know, here on the left, we have a couple ads from nonprofits at the top of Google. And you know, Google makes over $50 billion every year in ad revenue. And so how that works normally is when an advertiser uh, gets, has an ad get clicked and someone goes to their website, that advertiser pays Google. And so what your nonprofit actually gets is $10,000 every month in free clicks. And, but there are some key stipulations. The biggest stipulation by far when it comes to the Google grant is we're not allowed to bid more than $2 per click. And so uh, an example I like to use to illustrate this is the keyword donate. Many nonprofits we talk to say, well, I'd love to be on the first page of Google when someone searches donate. However, donate can typically cost you know, $6 or more per click. And so it impacts our strategy by going after what we refer to as longer tail keywords. So something like donate to veterans, donate to military families, um, it's the longer tail keywords where we really win when it comes to the Google Ad Grant. Next is daily budget. So we talk so much about this $10,000 per month grant, which is certainly is, but we're actually, it's really a $329 per day daily grant. We're not allowed to spend you know, a few thousand dollars in one day, say something happens in the news that really relates to your mission. So it's really about building a sustainable, um, traffic channel of new visitors on a daily uh, basis. And then next, it's when it comes to the Google grant, we're only allowed to run what we refer to as search text ads only. So here on the left at the top from you know UNICEF and Save the Children, these are search text ads. These are the types of ads that we're allowed to run with the Google grant. We're not allowed to do remarketing ads or display ads or those image ads that follow you around on the internet. Um, your organization would have to invest real money to, to do that type of Google advertising. But again, so those are the major stipulations. And really that $2 cost per click limit stipulation is one of the reasons we, we hear often that a lot of nonprofits struggle to, to use their Google grant to its full effectiveness. Um, but it can be done and it can be very impactful once it gets uh, going. And so how do we apply for the grant? This sounds like a, you know, a pretty big question for this audience today. And it really breaks down into four key steps. But first, how much time would you need to allocate to get approved? Um, when you're, you've never applied for it before, we, if you can at least reserve about four hours, that should be enough time. And the good news when it comes to the Google grant is most organizations can get approved in about one week or less, right? Which is unique in the social sector where we're used to our grants taking six months or 12 months before we get approved or get our funding. So this is a, a grant that we can actually move very quickly on. And there's four main steps to getting approved. Step one is you need to set up your nonprofit at TechSoup. Um, if you've already done this, this is gonna speed up the process significantly. From there, you need to then apply for Google for Nonprofits um, overall. Once you're approved for that, then you apply specifically for the Google Ad Grant. And then last but not least, we wait to hear back from Google. Once you're in step four, honestly, sometimes this can be done in 24 hours or less. So it's really about those first four steps, or first three steps that take the most time. However, there are some eligibility restrictions to the Google Grant. But overall, um, most valid charities are actually eligible, um, you know, throughout the world. There's, there's a list of countries that are eligible, but, um, and many countries are. Um, here in the United States, if you are pending your 501c3 status, you won't, you're not eligible yet. You have to wait till you're approved. Um, of course, you have to have a website. But really the biggest eligibility restrictions, they typically are around government entities, 
schools, universities, you know, many universities are technically a 501c3, or hospitals. Those are not eligible for the Google grant, but um, overall, your organization certainly might be, and you can also go to this link for, the, for more details on eligibility. And then last, we want to talk here about, well, what does it take to, to maintain and stay, keep your Google grant activated? And it, it's exciting because what Google's really trying to do is to, you know, $10,000 is a lot of money. And ultimately, they just want you to be in AdWords and optimizing your account um, as much as you can. And so on their website, one of the main things is that you need to um, at least every 90 days log into AdWords and do some sort of optimization. If you're doing that, currently, you do not have to reapply. There's no annual application or anything like that. Um, it's really more about monitoring that you are being active and continuing to try and leverage this channel. All right, so now you know we know how to get approved and we know what the eligibility is and, and hopefully our organization has a green light. And, but next we wanna talk about just understanding how Google search works. And so for nonprofits, um, when we start to think about the Google grant, what we start to think about is, well, what are our different audiences and different personas searching for? Both those who we serve and those who might be willing to support our mission, what are they searching in Google? And it's, I mean, it's exciting. Google does over 100 billion searches every single month, and they're just gaining more and more market share. It's expected that over 80% of all internet searches will happen on Google by the end of 2019. And that's, that's pretty powerful. And so when we audit different nonprofits analytics accounts, um, typically when they're you know, ranking on the first page, it's primarily for um, branded search or when people are searching for their organization or campaign name, and which is you know, great, but the power of the grant is going after people who haven't yet heard of your mission or your organization. And so there's four ways people search. They'll search for your organization name, they'll search for information, they'll search for questions, or something specific or explicit. And they'll be very detailed in exactly what they're looking for. And unfortunately, right, most nonprofits were not always on the first page of Google when it matters most. And one, case study we'll be hitting on later is an organization called Moms and Fair International. And, you know, they would ideally love to be on the first page. Uh, you know, as we see, we're not ranking on the first page for this keyword, prayer for children. However, what we do is we use the Google grant to be at the top, right? So here's our ad at the top of Google for this keyword. And that's the competitive advantage about the Google grant. It's such a powerful opportunity to find people who are not just searching for our brand. And then when our, we write compelling ads, we're able to generate more visitors to our site. Therefore, we can you know, create more supporters, subscribers, volunteers, customers, and of course, ultimately donors. And so next we wanna talk about developing a Google Ad Grant strategy that actually drives results. And so we like to first think about, well, what is your organization's um, online marketing funnel look like? And that, this is a, a great place to start, right? Because the Google grant, it's not a magic light switch of online giving. Um, you know, if someone searches, you know, donate to education and you have an education nonprofit, well, great, let's take that person to a donate page. But so often our visitors from the grant have actually, you know, they haven't heard of our brand or mission yet. And so we need to warm them up and we need to move them down our online marketing funnels and enroll them into what we do and the stand we make in the world. And so the Google grant is a great way to send, you know, 5,000 plus visitors to the top of our funnel. But then it's up to our other efforts to move people down the funnel. So, you know, a common funnel we'll encounter for a nonprofit is to generate traffic, step one. From there, to uh, encourage and try and build our email subscriber list and to build subscribers. 
and hopefully we start to generate you know hundreds of, of these every month through our Google Grant. Then we wanna onboard and show value in step three and really share the mission. From there, we look to have people cross the threshold and become a first time donor or a first time purchaser or customer or you know, if you drive revenue through your programming. And then last but not least in step five, we're looking to generate more recurring donors, repeat customers or inspire an even visionary donor. And that's a big part when we think about your organization uh, marketing funnel and how to use the Google grant to actually drive results. And so we get asked a lot and we, you know, people say, well, we've set up our grant, but can it actually increase online giving? And it, and it, it, it can. Um, you know, here at Community Boost, way before we did the Google grant, we were just, we were running online fundraising campaigns. We were, we were in the thick of it, coming up with the creative, trying to, you know, move new people to give, but it was hard to find new people to get behind our nonprofit partner's mission. And actually, when we first set up our Google grant, it was really a byproduct of a year-end fundraising campaign. And we set it up for a smaller organization here in San Diego called Wounded Warrior Home really just, again, to support our year-end campaign. And before Wounded Warrior Homes had Google Grants, um, they generated around $17,000 in online revenue from around 233 donors. The following year, we launched our Google Grant, we amplified their site traffic, and we scaled online giving to over $95,000 from 1,400 online donors. And so this was a real aha moment, that the Google Grant can be a very powerful marketing channel. All right, so next we wanna hit on some best practices for managing your AdWords campaign. So we got an understanding of our strategy and, and how um, to move people down our marketing funnel, but where do we start? So once you're approved for your grant, one of the best practices we wanted to recommend today was to um, start when you're in the back end of AdWords in a tool called what's called the Keyword Planner. And this is a great place to really gauge the opportunity. Um, and so what you can do is you can put in example, you know, you really brainstorm out all sorts of different keywords that you think those that you serve or those that might be excited to support your mission might be searching for. And you can actually put all those keywords into the planner and what it will kick out is data on what is the estimated search volume for those terms. You know, if you're a local organization, well, you can see how many people are searching for your type of services in a local level down to the zip code. Or if you're a national organization, you can see what kind of traffic opportunity there is on a national level. So this is a great place to start to really, especially when you're on the strategy uh, stage. Next, once you start to get familiar with AdWords, um, we recommend exploring AdWords editor. And so, the AdWords web platform is great. It's a great place to start. But then when you start to really build out your campaigns, the AdWords editor can be a much faster way of doing so, especially when you start doing optimization. It allows you to make bold changes much um, and, and save you a lot of time long term. And then next, and really one of my top best practices is to uh, link your analytics and AdWords accounts because it, it ultimately comes down to measuring and quantifying the impact of these uh, digital marketing channels for your organization. Because if we don't set up conversion tracking, then what you're really doing is you're only optimizing based on traffic to your site, but that's not what matters most. And so, you know, we like to think about what are the macro goals for your organization? Is it online donations? Is it product sales? And then also, what are the micro goals we want to, to also measure? Things like email subscribers, volunteer signups, maybe program inquiries. And you can set up those goals in analytics. And once you do that, it can really transform how you approach uh, the on online space and it, how your team can make data-driven decisions to move the needle on what matters most for your organization. And so next, I'm going to pass it over to Lindsay, who's going to hit on some key digital essentials to, um, to drive even more results and performance for your nonprofit. 
Thanks, Cameron, and hello, everyone. Uh, like Cameron mentioned, next I'd like to go through some of the call to action of web page essentials in particular um, for really maximizing peak performance. So to start off, I'd like to go through the call to action essentials. So when you're developing your ad language, you really want to focus your ad language on the heart of what your organization accomplishes every day. So the specifics will be a very important factor when creating this language. Um, too general of a message may not be enough to encourage people to take that extra step. So we really want to be able to share your organization's mission and your campaign goals in a compelling way. For example, telling a compelling story um, or really showing the impact of how a campaign or initiative made a difference. Um, the call to action is really your chance to show your audience how they can make a direct impact by taking some type of action. So developing a strong call to action there will be very important in that ad language. As a tip, um, when someone clicks your ad, they should be taken to a web page that reinforces the language in your ad description or the phrase that they searched. So we really want to make sure all of the um, relevant is in uh, the info is relevant, so that when we are building that flow, when they come to the page, they're staying on the page and making it more likely to build your conversion rates there. For web page essentials, ad word links should really go to web pages with a few elements to ensure the best user experience. A couple of these include the HTTPS security. So as you see on the PowerPoint, making sure the web page you're driving traffic to is secure is very important. This will ensure all your donor data is safe and that the uh, donor themselves, when they're completing their information, whether it's a donation or registration or sign up, they're comfortable um, completing that form because of the security on your site. Another added benefit is that it enables autofill on devices. So if you're using a tablet or a mobile device with saved information and you're coming to a secure page, you're able to autofill the information straight into there. It'll pre-populate everything, just makes for a much quicker and easier simplified donor experience. Another thing we want to consider is having an embedded iframe on your page. So really making sure that the iframe is part of your website. So as to keep all of your branding and make sure the page is nice and clean. And this also will help because for Google AdWords, you can keep all of the tracking through your site. We also want to embed video on these um, forms or web pages. The embedded video will really help solidify that storytelling as part of that call to action. It gives you the opportunity for this media to provide a little bit more of a backstory, a call to action as to why people should be participating. And um, what we see is that pages with embedded video have four times the conversion rate. So a very great benefit there. And also we would want our page to be a mobile friendly design. So making sure your site is mobile responsive. So no matter what device someone is using, they can easily navigate your site. And also making sure that all of your forms that you're using within that site are compatible with the mobile responsive page. Again, leading for the best user experience when they're visiting and we're driving traffic to these web pages. Next, I'd like to go through some of the online giving tips. So there's a couple things you'll want to consider for options when you're creating your optimal donation form. So when we're beginning to focus on fundraising and driving traffic to a donation page in particular. So for example, we will want to highlight a default donation amount. The default donation amount is going to be important because we are really specifying and giving a example of a gift we want someone to give. And we find with that default donation amount, a lot of donors tend to lean towards that. 
just as important is the suggested amount that you're providing with that. So um, you'll notice here we have default donation amount highlighted in the middle between two other amounts. So we wanna make sure that the amounts we're providing are within um, uh, a level so we can have a lower amount, but we do wanna encourage our average donation amount or a little bit higher and definitely a higher amount to really show to the donor if they'd like to donate more, they can. If you have any specific tangible items are, um, as far as impact metrics, what a donation may be helping, those will be key to include in any type of donation form. For example, with every $500 you donate, we are able to do X, Y, and Z. Anywhere where we can bring those levels where people can build a direct connection to how their donation is helping is just going to be all the more motivating. Now, another um, thing we'll want to consider for our online donation form is recurring donation options. So you'll wanna make sure it, your form is configured to have those enabled. It really just gives people the extra opportunity to provide continued support. And last but not least, we want to um, consider the number of required fields we have on a form. So what we see, and in my experience, the shorter the form, the better. It's an easier donor experience for them to come through and complete it, especially on a mobile device. So in requiring important fields, obviously, like first, last name, and point of contact information, like a mobile number or an email, and considering hiding additional fields like address, city, company name, business name, things that you may not necessarily need to make for the most streamlined donor experience. As a tip here, we want to test and adjust the donation pages settings during the campaigns to increase the average gift sizes. Um, this will allow you to see the results from different scenarios. Perhaps if you up the donation, default donation amount, you may receive more funds, less donors, but it's still equi uh, equally more total revenue. So playing around with the default donation amounts, starting off with your average donation, can give you some good insight to what works best for your audience. Now I'd like to go through some A-B testing tips. So creating unique URL landing pages for every page you wanna measure is going to help give you some insight as to the results from these different pages. So setting up different landing pages with small changes or big changes, for example, to really compare the effect these changes have on traffic and conversion rates. One example could be having a donation form, one with a video embedded and one without. This gives you the opportunity to really determine the effect of that video on the specific conversion rate. Some other examples include campaign totals. So separating out your campaigns so you have an easy way to track all of your campaigns, for example, events, signups, registrations, giving, so you can really determine the difference between all of those. And more importantly, your channel totals, how you're sharing out your information and these forms. For example, having a unique landing page for email, having another one for your social media. You can even go a little bit further and develop unique URLs, one for Facebook, one for Twitter, and one for Instagram. So as information is coming through, you can really separate all of those channels out and see the success rate from those particular outlets. So um, be sure when you are doing things, um, we're including the average conversion code in the source code of your thank you page on all of your forms. So it'll be really easy just to copy and paste into the thank you page. So you'll really be able to track the conversion rates measure and compare and adjust your AdWords strategy for increased performance. Right. Now we always recommend strengthening your email communications with mobile marketing. So 
giving your website visitors the option to submit their mobile number and or their email address as a way to stay in touch. And as you're collecting this information, following up with important updates about your organization. So what we find is that emails sent out with corresponding text messages receive two times the amount of clicks. And this is for a couple of reasons. We see when people are receiving information from multiple channels, they're more likely to see it. And also the open rate for text messaging is extremely high. So we have a more likely opportunity to get in touch with these donors and constituents. As a tip, add mobile number for text updates option on your site um, and really make it clear that it is for text message communications. Um, we really want to respect the communication preferences of your constituents. And when we are giving um, the opportunity for them to opt in, they're ready to receive those messages. And those are going to be the best type of communication and relationships you're building through text. So definitely um, consider that mobile marketing as a way to really develop your outbound communications. Now, we'll also want to get technical, technical support for the results that you would like to achieve. So identifying and empowering a member of your team to become your AdWords champion. Um, they will be involved with both the fundraising software management as well as the AdWords campaign management. Um, and they'll really help to bring the two together to provide successful results for your organization. So if you can find that champion, bring them on board. Um, ask for volunteers within your base that would like to build their marketing portfolio by managing your AdWords account with the goal of maximizing your Google ad performance and uh, really helping to analyze the data that is coming through. Right. And that really wraps up everything I wanted to go through for the call to action, the web page essentials. Now I'd like to pass things back over to Cameron, who's going to be sharing with us a particular success story. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. And so to, to recap already, right, we've talked about how to get approved, who's eligible. We hit on the overall online marketing funnel strategy and how ad grants fill the top of the funnel. And then Lindsay did a great job at some you know, deeper best practices that can help us convert. And so we just wanted to share, um, as we end, a case study. And this is an organization called Moms and Prayer International. We've worked with them here at Community Boost for quite some time. They're one of our first Google Ad Grant partners, as well as they have also invested in the mobile cause platform as well. So um, it's a great case study as we make sure I'm able to click here. There we go. Um, and so, Let's talk about um, Moms and Prayers Funnel and the different steps and how the ad grant has played into this. So again, step one is driving new quality visitors to the website. And so how much traffic has the Google ad grant provided for Moms and Prayer? And it's pretty exciting. This year to date, the Google ad grant channel has made up 38% of MIP's total site traffic. And that's really powerful because the majority of this traffic are often first-time visitors. And so to give us some context of the type of keywords people have searched and then found the MIP website, it was search terms like prayer of the day, uplifting Bible verses, prayers to pray for children, or morning prayer. And again, for this nonprofit, our persona or the key audience we're targeting are often Christian mothers. And so uh, the Google grant has really been a powerful bridge to fill the top of the funnel. And so next we go into step two again. How do we convert first time visitors? And so, you know, tools we recommend to, to really try and capture the, these new visitors are things like landing pages, scroll boxes, um, email pop ups, or header or footer conversion bars. And there's a lot of great platforms out there, things like ClickFunnels or lead pages that can also work really well. And even if we are a nonprofit with limited development um, resources, that we can actually do these things. There's WordPress plugins, there's all sorts of ways to actually execute. And so these tools can be really powerful 
in building our list, right? Because if someone, for example, searches prayers for children, well, we don't want to just send that visitor to the home page. We might want to send them to a landing page where they can download our 31 days of scripture prayer, and we're providing value for our, our new visitor. And now we have that email and we can communicate more of the mission, which really takes us to step three, which is now sharing the mission. And um, Lindsay was hitting on some of this as well, but email marketing can be so cost effective for the organization. And as someone subscribes, we start to see where they're subscribing. And you can build out automated email sequences. You know, most platforms like the MailChimp and these type of platforms allow for this as well. Um, so we can use email marketing. It can be very cost effective, but also um, definitely want to encourage organizations to explore things like mobile marketing as well, right? Because as an industry overall, our email rates, are, our, our open rates are, you know, consistently moving down. Um, and so if we can pepper in mobile marketing, again, when our um, constituents choose that, that can also be very effective because open rates are very high there. And so just, you know, knowing people's preferences and how they want to be communicated to will ultimately increase engagement. So at this point, we've been sharing the mission. And now, again, step four, how do we get them to cross that threshold and you know, make their first donation or purchase our services or programs. And, you know, this is different from for every organization, but overall, especially when making a donation app, we want to make this tangible and transparent. Lindsay had some great tips talking about, you know, again, embedding video, anything we can do that really shares the story. But again, this is one of the biggest things just to, to emphasize it, right? That when we use the Google grant, it's first time visitors. That's often a lot of the traffic. And so, of course, if someone's looking to donate or sponsor a child, we want to take them to the actual donation page. But for a lot of that traffic, it's more mission related. So if we can build the list, eventually we get to step four when they're ready, when they've um, been enrolled in the mission and they really value the work we're doing in the world, which takes us to step five. So now someone has given, and I just really wanted to, to hit on this today because in 2017, I feel like this is a tremendous opportunity for the nonprofits in our space. How can we continue to take our digital donor stewardship to the next level? Almost every organization, right, when we donate, we get a transactional thank you email, but that's really it. And there's an opportunity with your team, whether you are, you know, one person or have multiple people to, to try new things. And so, you know, Giving Tuesday, it's going to be here in no time. What if just for that day, the people who donated to you on Giving Tuesday, you just tried to send them all a personal thank you video? Or, you know, how else can you communicate with your donors to really foster that stewardship and, and really just say thank you in a unique way that ultimately will encourage a higher lifetime value and increase your retention rate. And just, you know, one more example, right? Like if you are running a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, if Cameron, if myself, if I'm raising money for your organization and I have a $5,000 goal and maybe one person from my network gave, you know, my page $1,000, well, they gave your organization $1,000, but really through me. And that's really interesting because if someone can give that and they haven't yet really connected very deeply with the organization, that person likely has capacity. And so how, like how often is your nonprofit actually reaching out to those people, maybe setting up a meeting, a coffee date, to, to learn more about the type of organizations that they're passionate about? And so, you know, step five, as we look to create more visionary and long-term donors, this is, this is where you can really put your own mission and your own twist into the people that have given in the past and, and really show your appreciation. And so from there, I think we're going to run one more poll. All right. Thank you, Cameron. And thank you, Lindsay, for all your insight. Let's go ahead and get to the next poll question. 
Um, in what area does your organization need the most Google AdWords support? Managing AdWords campaigns, sending follow-up communications, getting website visitors to become subscribers, collecting event registrations. I'm going to go ahead and give you a few seconds to make your selection. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one. Increasing one time and reoccurring online gifts. I apologize. Give you a few more seconds there. They're coming in quickly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that and share the results. Looks like we have managing AdWord campaigns at 38%, uh, sending follow-up communications 3%, getting website visitors to become subscribers 22%, and collecting event registrations 3%, and increasing one-time and reoccurring online gifts 34%. Um, Cameron and Lindsay, you have any input on these? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this, you know, especially on the managing AdWord side of things, and you know, today's webinar, it was certainly more strategy focused because that's where it's important to start to really figure out how to come up with your organization's AdWords strategy. Um, we've actually been talking in the Mobile Cause team, and, and I believe we're not only going to be sending out an ebook, which will be more detailed about how to actually manage the campaign, but we're also talking about doing um, a second webinar, and it'd be really focused. You know, in the back end of AdWords, and actually how you know that more of the how of managing it. So we got your guys' back. We got we just got some more time there, um, and so hopefully we'll be you know uh, providing that support here in the very near future. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we're going to switch gears here for a few minutes to answer any questions that folks may have sent in. Um, let's go ahead. Let's see. The first question is, um, what's the three one rule? Yeah, um, I can take that. The three one rule is really how we are communicating with our constituent base. So we want to have three messages that are focused on the engagement element. So that could be different things like building um, a story or a narrative to your constituent base or giving them the back information on the mission and the goals of the campaign and then the one uh, kind of the, three, the one part of it will be the actual call to action what are we hoping for our audience to do so we don't always want to be sending out those call to actions or those appeals we really want to supplement that with that cultivation those three messages especially in text all right excellent thank you Lindsay um, can you touch on applying for Ads Grants Pro? If approved once before but not active in longer mm -hmm. than 90 days, how do you reactivate? Um, new application? Okay, so it sounds like there's a couple things there. So um, I heard a mention of Google Ad Grants Pro, and so that used to be a um, an incredible opportunity in which uh, Google for nonprofits, if you maxed out your $10,000 and you had conversion tracking, you could actually qualify for $40,000 per month in free Google ad spend. And it's really powerful. Um, however, that has now been uh, kind of indefinitely paused. And so there's no set timeline if or when it, it'll come back. And then as far as deactivation, um, that can happen at, at really any level of the Google grant. Um, if your Google grant gets deactivated, it's likely because no one went into AdWords for, again, over 90 days. And um, But yet, getting reactivated is really easy. Um, Google does a great job, and when you log into AdWords, there will be a notification, kind of a red bar. You go through that process, you connect with Google, usually it takes about a day or less. And however, it is kind of a slap on the wrist, and it's they're basically saying, hey, don't get deactivated again, or you can lose this $10,000 per month grant. And so at that point, you'd want to make sure you have the time and resources to consistently maintain your account. Excellent. Thank you, Cameron. Um, mobile text messaging seems like it might be annoying. 
do you know the conversion rate on that? And how many people type in stop? And severe relationships with organizations do do too much communication. Is this a generational thing? Millennials more likely to accept this? Okay, um, I can uh, take that question. So many of your donors prefer text messages over email. Um, our recommendation is that you give your supporters the option in the way that they would prefer to be communicated in the beginning and always respect what their, their answers are. So um, this is the best donor experience, you'll be allowing them to opt in and then you really get an idea of what types of text messages people want to receive. So um, really targeting that group of those who opted in for text messaging um, and um, being mindful about the communications that we're sending out. So bringing in that 3-1 rule, we don't want every text message to be some type of appeal, but really um, developing some type of um, story or narrative behind it. And then also, um, being mindful of the frequency about text messages. So developing some type of strategy so people don't see them as annoying, but they're really focused and targeted on what your audience wants to hear. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Um, is there a difference between AdWords Express and plain AdWords? Is AdWords Express not eligible for the grant? Somehow we were accepted, mm -hmm. but we're linked to AdWords Express. Got it. So um, AdWords Express is a tool that, you know, Google has rolled out to try and make advertising easier on the platform. Um, it's, it's interesting. And so if, while you are in AdWords Express, you, you would be able to click through and move into the normal AdWords platform if you'd like to. You can kind of actually go back and forth. Um, but it, with the $2 cost per click, um, it's it's hard to get high traction and, and um, traffic going sometimes in AdWords Express because um, ultimately what is most important is is you know building out your account so that you are your ads are relevant and when someone searches something they're going to a page on your site where everything is relevant and you know of course you, you can get that done in AdWords Express but as you um, Spend more time optimizing your accounts and um, and kind of learning AdWords. Eventually, it might be more. Um, you might get better results if you do make the leap into AdWords. All right, thank you. Um, how do you send a personalized thank you video? Yeah, you so can't... I think I had oh, mentioned. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, um, I mean, really, there's all sorts of ways. I mean, you could do that. You could, you know, just film on your iPhone, upload to YouTube, send the, the unique donor a link. Um, there's really any ways so that you could do more streamlined fashion. But, Lindsay, it sounds like you had some insights, too. Yeah, just to add on um, everything that you said, and then we can also include text messaging as a great way. So again, fleeting kind of back into what we're talking about, de developing that compelling narrative. Um, people want to know what their donations were going towards. So developing a great um, thank you video and sending out in a text message is a great example of a text message that people want to receive. So just a, another way that you can include um, an option for a thank you video. All right, thank you both. Um, we have a question here. Um, how can we measure how many people go from step one to step two to step three to step four to step five mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the final? Great question. And so one of the, you know, the ideally where we're trying to measure that would be in Google Analytics. Um, and so how that works, right? So you set up conversion goals and um, so, you know, step one, that's really just the, the total site traffic. Um, if someone's converting into an email subscriber, then we would have a conversion goal when someone, you know, moves into a, a subscriber. And then um, basically, again, we try and set up our macro goals within analytics as well as any micro goals. 
And so you can set up different conversion goals, both within analytics and within AdWords. And as you know, Lindsay was hitting on as well, um, like for example, for trying to measure when people donate. Um, that often right now, one of the easiest ways to do that is with a conversion tag pixel, which you can pull from AdWords, or you can set up a, um, a thank you page URL tracking goal within analytics. So if you're sending people to like a unique thank you page, that's really one of the best places to get in the habit of setting up a conversion goal would be on a thank you or confirmation page. All right, well, thank you both, Cameron and Lindsay, for answering those questions for us. We're gonna go ahead and move on. Um, looking to expand on what you learned today, reach out to Community Boost and schedule your free Google Grant Discovery today. And if you're interested in discovering how to accelerate your fundraising and donor engagement programs, you can speak directly with an expert at Mobile Cause by calling 888-661-8804. I want to say that again, 888-661-8804, or by visiting mobilecause.com slash free dash consultation. All right, it's all about time that we have for today. Thank you for our wonderful presenters and thank you all for attending. You will receive the webinar recording and the slide presentation shortly. Stay tuned for the Google AdWords infographic and ebook in the upcoming weeks and our webinar next month when we cover how to supercharge your Giving Tuesday social media strategy. Have a great day and goodbye.